1982, Jean Lucky graduated from a diploma of teaching at Avondale. By that time, she had already experienced God's faithfulness. She set out to live her dream of working with children and ensuring their voices were heard. She's had many adventures along the way. Jean Carter is the citation recipient for the class of 1982. Jean, congratulations. Thank you. Can you tell me where you and your husband, Peter, are living at the moment and what you're both up to? Yes, so just last year, we moved down to Melbourne in the middle of COVID. So it was an exciting move. We we got here, We God led all the way. He found a house that we could rent that we never even saw, never even visited. He found Peter a job before we could even come down and be interviewed. Um, it was just amazing how many doors got opened for us to come down to Melbourne. Yeah, doing anything during COVID would would be a challenge, but but moving um, especially would have been quite a tricky thing. So <laughs> let me take you back to your time at Avondale and in particular, your first year out after graduation, you went to a school, I understand, correct me if I'm wrong, you were sort of the sole person for that school, the principal, the teacher. What was that like your first year out? Because it's almost like being thrown in the deep end. It was just amazing. I as I said I said to God, I'm happy to go anywhere, but not South Australia, please. You know, just I don't know why. I'd never been to South Australia. <laughs> um, but with God's sense of humour, he sent me to Mount Gambia, which is right on the border of South Australia and Victoria. He knew what I needed. The most amazing place, so many adventures, caving and and the people were welcoming and I met my husband there, Peter. So that was lovely. That's a and win. <laughs> absolutely. And so uh, what I guess being on your own, because I know you mentioned that you didn't have a license when you went there. How did you actually survive? I know you speak, you look, you're looking back on it and you're saying all of these things with, with a lovely tone, but how did you actually survive? There must have been some hard moments. Well, with the license, it was literally because I didn't have a car when, when I was growing up from about 13, 14 in our, in our family. It was literally, oh, oh, God sent me to Mount Gambia. How am I going to get there? Oh, let's look for a car. So my sister took me car shopping and my brother-in-law took me to drive around the block a few times in his car. And within a week and a half, I'd had, I, I got my P plates. Um, so a very different world back then, can I just say. And and then my my older sister came with me and as we drove down to Mount Gambia to settle to in the house down there. Um, a beautiful school, nine kids. It, it was just like a family. It was just lovely. Yeah. Oh, I'm glad you've got those lovely memories from there. <laughs> you've been teaching and working with kids um, and that's always been something that you've done. But where did that initial, I guess, flame start from? You know, why the path of education? All, all my life, basically, mum, mum used to tell me I'd, I'm the typical line up the teddies and teach them, or, or you know, get the dogs all in line and and teach them, or all the neighbourhood friends. That that was me, and loved Pathfinders, loved JMVs back then, and my church, amazing church, Thornley Church. Thank you to Thornley Church. They put me in as the adventurers leader when I was 16. Um, an amazing man, Mr. Chu Norm Chu. He he was the deputy as such, but he let me be the leader. And and I just loved, I just loved working with children and, and kids and and the church encouraged me and supported me going to Avondale to do teaching. So tell me how they supported you in getting to come to Avondale and teach. My father passed away when I was about 13, and they were the ones that took me to Pathfinders, and they were the ones that that offered to take me to an ad to send me to an Adventist school to go to Avondale. They kept they they kept saying, you need to go to Avondale to be a teacher. You know, don't go to a state school, you need to go to Avondale. Mm -hmm. um, but we, we couldn't afford it. And and so it was thanks to um, the Wongs, the Chews, the Morrises and the Wicks. And mm -hmm. they they got me to Avondale. Um, even providing clothes and, and money for soap and um transport up and down and this and the fees for the first year until I could find work up there just an amazing church that courage encouraged my passion oh how 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 thoughtful how kind mm, they're, they're amazing people 
you, in your first few jobs, uh, I guess I could say to you, how many principals did you work under? <laughs> no. <laughs> I know in your first few roles, you were the principal, weren't you? Uh, yes, except for being at Avondale, uh, Avondale University, I've always been the principal, so <laughs> it's a bit tricky. <laughs> yes, well, I was going to say, you started out in several schools being that principal, being that sole, sole person in charge. You say you didn't have a license when you first went to Mount Gambier. You headed overseas to Invercargill. There's a lot of, I guess you could say, someone would say adventures, others others would say challenges, but you really seem to relish in that when others, you know, might be, feel overwhelmed, you thrive. Probably. I, I love the sense of adventure. I love seeing new things. Going to Invercargill was just amazing. God knew what I needed um, to get there and to just overnight, you know, oh, let's pop down to Milford Sound for the evening after school. Let's just pop over to Lake Tiana. It was just beautiful. And the students there were lovely. And just to have another chance of teaching in another country, even though it's pretty close to Australia, it, my, when the Ed Director came down, I'd, we only had two weeks to get passports and get over to New Zealand. It was literally, they couldn't find anyone. And the education director visited the day after I arrived. So it was one day there and, and I'll still remember he said, well, I'm a bit worried. You're still teaching like an Australian. I go, <laughs> oh no, I'm doing it all wrong. Let me try again. <laughs> but you know, it, it just, for me, that's a challenge. Yeah, learn, what is the difference? Let's do it. Don't, don't wither and die. I just get in there and, and enjoy it. You've done several roles, not just teaching. You've done a fair, fair, uh, fair amount of administrative roles, you know, in Sydney and in Melbourne, all to do with the Adventist Church. There's a lot of moving around with those roles. So tell me how your husband has accompanied you in that career path, because he seems to have sort of followed your your career journey. Uh, and again, God knew the exact person for for our journey together peter is just as he's an amazing man he can turn his hand to anything he's been uh, he started as a carpenter a carpenter a wool press a roofer a cook a, a school hand a, <laughs> so he helped me as a teacher's aide um working in a farm a smelter um and a school maintenance man and currently he's a boat builder that's his new oh, career really? since moving to Melbourne. Oh, is that <laughs> building you a boat? <laughs> uh -huh, we wish, no, they're a bit expensive. <laughs> Almost ahead of your time because I, I, I guess, you know, you were doing that in a time where that nece wasn't necessarily the common culture. <gasps> no, no. And and to be fair, a lot of people um, used to um, frown at that. Oh. Oh, you, oh, you wouldn't ask your husband to leave his job, would you? Um, and no, I didn't ask him to, we decided together. So, yeah. a, a team ahead of their time. Yeah, <laughs> very much so. <laughs> You've been one of the first female, I guess, kindy to 12 principals and, and, and education leader. What's been some of the joys of being a female leader in what's mostly been a fairly a male dominated area? Yeah, I have been thoroughly blessed with the people I've worked with. I have never felt um, slighted or sidelined. Um, and and when I feel like I'm being put on a committee because they want the female representative, um, I'm blessed in that I can say that and, and they don't get a face. No, I'm not going on that just to be a female token female, you know, I want to go, I want to be on that committee because I can say something, not not to tick a box. And so the people that I've worked with have, have just been marvellous. Even, even the deputies, because it was many years ago, um, being a male deputy, I was very blessed to have a male deputy, Lyndon Darko, that, that just accepted it and worked with me and taught me how secondary works. And um, so for me, it's been a wonderful journey. I know we often have people say that the church um, you know, doesn't allow, stifles females. I've never experienced that. And I've, and I've always had equal opportunities um, in my field, in my chosen field. Yeah, that's really lovely to hear. Tell me who some of your mentors have been in your professional journey and maybe why, why they've yeah. been. 
So, so there's actually six I, I, I thought of. Norm Chu, um, he encouraged me to just have a passion for working for the church. Um, and then Don Roy, and, and he encouraged me about the beauty of working as a team because I'd been a sole charge person for so long. He, he showed me, you know, working as a team, you can do much better and much stronger. And then John Hammond, and he was the person that really showed me, you can, you know, stop making excuses. You can do it, just do it. Um, accept challenges that you're afraid of. So that was John and Daryl Murdoch, uh, very much and still working for Daryl now, you know, have a focused plan, follow your plan, you know, it doesn't mean you can't deviate if something happens, but keep the end in mind. Michael Worker, I worked with him in Sydney and he just taught me so much about compliance and policy and following the rules, um, which, which I really hated to start with, but he showed me how important it was. And, and then another one um, from my days at college was Peter Beamish. And, and from him, it was just dream big, you know, don't be stuck in a box, think, think outside. So they're the people that, that mm -hmm. I would say I've, I've really learned from on my professional career. Well, Jean, this is the first time I've met you, but I've heard your name mentioned several times over the years, and it's always been in the same vein. Like it's about your care, your commitment, your championing of others, your support, and in particular, your love of Christ. Congratulations on being the citation recipient for the class of 1982. Thank you so much. Now, there's more to Jean's story, so I encourage you to head to the Avondale Alumni Facebook page or just to our website to read her citation. And if you'd like to send her a message or give her a shout out, comment on this post or send me an email at alumni at avondale.edu.au.